Okay, so we today are actually just going to rattle off different types of services that exist, what that actually looks like as far as like you delivering that service. And actually, we're going to throw in some examples because I know for some of you, say you're like a teacher or you work in healthcare or you work at like a prison or like there's so many things that just feel like on paper that they're not transferable or there's just like no way that you could ever take that with you online. I think that always like you know right now if you work in a job where you do all your work on a computer and you just need internet then it's probably fairly likely that you can do that exact job but as a freelancer online yes i'd say in that category then there's different aspects where you might be doing a million different things so you'd need to choose something to do mm -hmm. then on the other hand it's kind of that bucket that chelsea just mentioned where it seems like it's not transferable because your current situation you couldn't do working from home on a laptop however i definitely know that all of you have so many more transferable skills than you're giving yourself credit for and if you come to any of our live trainings or any of our things ever then you'll yeah. know that we always talk about how women often undervalue some of their skills and are never the first to put their hands up and say I'm amazing at this or I've done this before but this experience could go into this so that's kind of the theme of this live is to go through all of those different opportunities that actually are out there and to try and paint a bigger picture of what's possible because often you don't know what you don't know I know that's definitely how I felt when I first discovered the online space is you just don't know what you don't know right so so what we do at her HQ is we help you create what we would call a freelance service-based business, okay? So this is not selling templates on Etsy. This is not doing Amazon drop shipping. This is not doing affiliate marketing. It is taking a skill set, whether that you already have or whether that sounds fun for you to learn, and then you're gonna take that and offer it to companies that are small and that need what we would call fractional support. So another thing people get confused on is like, we're not helping you find a full-time free, like remote job. That's not what we're doing. You are going to have services that you offer as a freelancer. And the way that you're going to offer that to people is you're specifically going to serve people who have small companies and therefore they are not looking to hire full-time, but they need what we would call fractional or freelance support. Okay. So I'm going to dig in. Let's like dig into it. So Okay, number one, a lot of you that have any kind of administrative assistance, customer service, customer experience, any of that stuff, a way that you can do that in the online space or digitally is by being either a customer success manager or even a community manager. So I'm going to walk through kind of what those mean. So a customer success manager for a company that can like work with somebody remotely, that's doing things like receiving customer requests and responding, scheduling calls, sending proposals, sending contracts, setting up software or like systems that help people communicate with their customers. So customer success, right? You're helping people set that up. Now you can do that in a ton of different industries. You can do that in healthcare. You can do that in like personal training. You can do that in e-commerce. You can do that in brick and mortar. Like the cool thing about as a, being a freelancer is that you actually get to pick not only what service you want to offer, but then what kind of customer you want to work with, right? So customer success is essentially your ability to help them successfully navigate conversations with their customers in a variety of ways. Yeah. And what's so cool about offering this is that if you have any of that kind of background, it's likely that you joined a company, say you work at an insurance company and you do kind of customer success, customer management there. There was likely a time where you didn't know anything about insurance, but you learned yeah. and then you did it and now you're great at it. Yeah. So that same learning curve can totally be applied to a different industry. So that's kind of where you can apply lots of those skills. If you've learned something before, you can learn it again and you can transfer those skills over. So that's a great place if you have any of that experience, it's totally transferable online and the who you serve, again, can be a variety. Yeah. Another example of that is being a community manager. So many of you have seen Amanda, talked with Amanda, Amanda offers what we would call community management services. So she helps companies who have communities of people. She has conversations. She helps like navigate, con like she helps the customers navigate where they need to go, what resources for them, how do they find like the next best thing that they need that's going to help them in their journey. So community management, y'all, you literally could get paid 
anywhere from, I say a thousand to $2,500 by responding to people in Facebook groups, comments, Put a but mind you love blown to chat to emoji. people and help Put people. Put a mind blown emoji in the chat. And they're like, oh my God, this is crazy. Yeah. I think yeah. what the biggest takeaway from today will be for any of you is that when you work corporate, you're actually expected to, do not, to not only do your job, but like other people's jobs. You have to be an expert at everything. You have to know everything. When you offer a freelance service, you actually only have to be really good at one thing. And that one thing thing is then what you offer in a fractional capacity and companies pay for that because it's really clear for them to know that you can help them right yes. and if corporate okay. taught you anything because it teaches you a bunch of stuff you know that you can learn lots of things so that's kind of the okay to take off. another one i want to mention because some of you this is actually quite transferable if you're already doing it so if you do anything in finance banking finance bookkeeping if you're a cpa like financial planning, any of that, those are all freelance services that you could offer in a fractional capacity to a company. Does this make sense to you guys? Like in the chat, does this make sense? So think of like your big corporate job. They need you for 40 hours a week. No negotiation. Like that's how much they need you. When you're a freelancer, you are working with people who are not at a place yet where they need to hire anyone full time, but they're willing to pay you fractionally, right? For a part of your time being a freelance. Does that make sense? I think sometimes when you're first learning about this, you're like, how in the actual hell can I do what I do at my full-time job, but for more than one person? Like, there's no way. That's the thing. Think about where your company was five or 10 years ago. That is who we're specifically looking to help because they are the people that need fractional support, okay? For any of you that do project management operations, anything along those lines, y'all, that right there, that was actually what I did. I came from corporate IT as a project manager, and then I worked online with, again, smaller companies. So not like the behemoths, that you know, a lot of us work with that are massive and they need somebody full time, but little companies that were making anywhere from $500,000 a year to like maybe a million. That is a lot, but for a company that's quite like a junior startup level. So I offered project management services to those companies at a fractional capacity and scaled to make a lot of money. So for any of you doing project management, ops management, executive assistance, things like that, that is actually a skill. That is your skill that you could go out and offer as a freelancer, right? Team management as well. Okay, some of you, this might not be something you do now. Maybe it is, or maybe it just seems interesting. Web design. Holly, yeah. this is what your like bread and butter was. Yeah. So I used to work at an ad agency and I worked on client services. So like managing all these different projects. So I had never actually myself built a website during my corporate job. However, I kind of knew about them. So then when I decided to start freelancing, I then taught myself how to design websites. So I literally just went on YouTube, Google and taught myself that. So I offered web design services and I offered brand design and services. So graphic design, you can totally teach yourself. I went to uni for that and kind of learned some of that there. But actually what you learn is that when you kind of do it yourself and you're practicing and practicing, that's often the most valuable. Yes. And web design for any of you listening. So this could be in any platform. So say you actually work a job right now and you are responsible for making web updates of any kind on Squarespace, on ShowIt, on, on WordPress, on Wix, Shopify, WordPress. any yeah. of this stuff. That is actually a service that you can offer as a freelancer. You can offer freelance web design to small companies who don't have the budget to hire a web designer full time. That's a service. I'd say also the rate that you can charge is anywhere from a thousand dollars to if you're really good and do it for a long time, like 10 grand or more for a website. So that is like a service that is very much needed and people every day book website projects with freelancers. Okay, another one, copywriting. So if any of you at work, or even if you like it, so this is the fun thing too about this whole endeavor, is some of you are actually gonna do what you do at corporate and you like it, but you just want to be able to like have more control over your schedule, have more control over the things that you work on, et cetera. You might roll right out of corporate with the same skill. Some of you might say, I literally hate everything about my job <laughs> and I don't want to do anything. Maybe for some of you, writing is actually quite fun. You find it creative. You find it inspiring. You can be a copywriter, you guys, and do anything from write social media content, write blogs, write newsletters, write website copy. Also, if you're asking, oh, is AI replacing copywriting? No. That no, is actually it definitely a phenomenal isn't. tool. That's a yeah. phenomenal tool to actually assist you at doing your work faster. But 
AI will never replace a human writing copy for a company. Like that's just never going to be. No, thing. like the so. only thing it really does, it can do for, like the, the basics, but it will never replace the actual human interaction of copywriting. Also, if you're a teacher, you're likely constantly marking work, reading through stuff. So actually if, if copywriting and writing is something that interests you, that's actually a great place where you can use some of your transferable skills. Yeah. Yes. So copywriting, whether it's a passion, maybe you're already doing some of it now, there's so many things you can do and you can either sell copywriting services as a retainer. So that means that you work with the same company every month and you kind of do similar work for them every month, or you do copywriting as a project. So like maybe you're writing a one-time project for a website. The rate of that you guys can again, range from like a thousand dollars to $5,000 per project based on what you were doing. So if you like to write, if writing is really fun, if it lights you up, copywriting could be a service that you offer online to those small businesses, okay? Kind of related to that is what we would specifically say email marketing. So say any of you are actually working in any kind of industry that there's logistics or there's e-commerce or there's any kind of fulfillment required of that. So email marketing is a huge way that companies market to their ideal customer. If you're somebody who has done that, maybe you just actually think it's interesting. Like the text messages that you can get when you like, you guys have seen it, right? Where you close out of a window and something texts you like 20 minutes later and it's like, hey, you forgot to buy this lotion. And you're like, that is crazy. If that is like interesting to you and it like makes your brain kind of like move and you're like, that would be really cool to learn. That is specifically a skill set that you can offer to small businesses in a fractional capacity. And I'd say the pay rate ranges from $1,000 a month all the way up to probably $4,000 a month, depending on how much content you are writing for a company. Yes. And the cool thing about email marketing is you can add in kind of a copywriting element, creative element, techie element. So great place to like explore that world and see what parts you love the most about it. Okay. This one's going to be like one of my favorites. So if any of you are sales reps right? Any of you are account managers, sales reps, SDRs, appointment setters, you have like you do cold outreach, anything. You are like perfect to offer what we would call sales or engagement strategy. So let me explain what this means. There are a lot of companies that completely sell through social media. Okay. They have Instagram content, they have TikTok content, they have Pinterest content, something. Maybe they run a big Facebook group and what actually they do is they provide value and then they need help qualifying customers, which is exactly what you do, but they're a small business. They do not have money to pay you as a sales rep, a base salary and commission. Like that's just not, that is literally out the window. They need that support but they're just not in a position to pay for it. So as a sales rep, you literally can offer sales development or sales closing or whatever your title wants to be, but you can offer that as a freelance service. What you do is on a fractional capacity, you're gonna go in, you're gonna provide value, you're gonna like have conversations with these people and you're gonna help these people either sign up for whatever it is that your client is selling or you figure out what is the best step for them to take. Literally doing exactly what you're doing but no longer working for like massive companies where there's massive outreach, but instead working with like small businesses who actually need support and someone to help them have conversations about what they're selling and then ultimately get people booked. The cool thing about this is that the industries you can work with are like unlimited. You can work with personal coaches. You can work with financial planners. You could work with brick and mortar companies. You can work with med spas. Y'all, how many times have y'all been looking at getting your hair done and you message a person they never message back? What is wrong with them? Like that is literally an example. You can help anyone from a sales perspective. But again, you're, you're thinking way up here. We really need you to come down to the micro level and think, okay, what small company could benefit from this? So for sales reps, I'd say that engagement strategy, sales closing, anything of that nature, price you can charge is anywhere from probably $750 on the very low end all the way up to two thousand dollars a month cool great all right i see some claps so i'm into it so sales reps don't think that you have to like skip industries actually take that run with it and then pick a niche that you specifically would love to serve that is a game changer okay um all right holly explained earlier about graphic design so that's great let's do another one social media management on a variety of platforms so if you're someone who finds 
And it doesn't have to be of your face. I think sometimes people think that to be a social media manager, you have to be showing your own face. That is not true. You know what I mean? You don't need social media following to offer social media management services. It's more about can you create content? So if you, obviously, if you have a personal Instagram, then this is probably isn't something you do. But actually, often businesses are creating scheduling stuff like they're creating stories every day they're creating reels they're creating graphics carousels all different types of posts and often this is planned in advance and then scheduled out by a social media manager so kind of the elements to that are copywriting graphic design and scheduling so if you do anything creative at all in your job at the moment and you feel like that sounds interesting if you like writing and feel like you could dabble with canva again you can teach yourself that if you find that you spend time on instagram again you can do this for instagram you can do it for tiktok which again would be video you could do it for linkedin okay you so can do it on literally on the best way to know if this is something that naturally, because I'd say it's very rare for us to actually meet somebody who does social media at their job, unless you're like some kind of office manager or like assistant or whatever. And like, they want you to take content of the day to day. That definitely counts. Yeah. Also, I'm going to answer this uh, selling yourself thing in a moment. Um, but when it comes to, so, so say if you're the person in your group of people that always gets dubbed to be responsible for documenting things, is anybody here like that friend who always gets the pictures, who always gets the good videos? Like if it's a surprise birthday party or a baby shower or whatever, if you always get dubbed as like the person who's the best at capturing the moment, you actually would probably be really good at doing social media content creation because you have a natural knack to like create a, an experience and capture it, right? Like that is, yeah, yes, that's me. Yeah, so like see, if yeah. you're literally the Do person this. that everybody's like, yeah, 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 make sure like you capture everything. That is like a natural, you have a natural ability to, to create content like that. So I would say, look into social media content creation how then that works from a delivery perspective is in say every month your client gets five reels and 10 static posts. Great. Like that is then the service that you're going to offer. And then your price point is obviously going to then be dependent on who you want to serve, right? If you do ads in any capacity at work, Google ads, Google console, Facebook ads, TikTok ads, Etsy ads, paid, ad, like any kind of ads for any of you, that is a literal service that you can offer as a freelancer. You can offer ad management, ad creation for a specific group of people, and you charge anywhere from, you know, $1,000 to $2,500 range-ish a month to manage that service. That is something that you can offer, and people literally every day lean into paid ads to grow their business. Yes. Oh, right? Another one thing you can also offer is podcast management, which again can be a cool thing if you like anything to do with editing videos, editing audio. If you are someone who consumes and listens to podcasts anyway, then actually you can pick a niche that you really like mm -hmm. and then have clients in that. So you're literally getting paid to listen to content that you love to listen to but edit it and this can also be great if you have any kind of background in editing any kind of background in even like teaching or going through anything reviewing things or if you're really just looking to totally change and just actually this is like one of those examples of if you love in your spare time listening to podcasts then this could be a really interesting thing to explore and just see. if any of you work in hr in any capacity in any way offering recruiting or like so let me phrase this in a way recruiting has a really i feel like negative connotation with a lot of people in hr and who have done recruiting what this is is not like cutthroat like scary crazy like off the wall bit like we're not talking about huge corporate recruiting we're talking about you're helping a small business owner find the right fit for their company. So again, think of like behemoth up here, really shrink it down to like the smallest level. If you work in HR, you could help people with like team placement or chart planning, job responsibility planning. There's so many things that you can do in the HR realm that small businesses they need, but they don't have money to pay a HR manager. They probably don't have HR department. <laughs> they don't have yeah. HR at all. Like they don't yeah. have it. Yes. Yeah. Just need someone to help because often hiring can feel scary to business owners who don't have that kind of knowledge. So, yeah, I mean, there's so much that you can offer. Like, that's the cool thing about this online world. Yeah. And I'd say 
just take it one step at a time. So it's okay if it's like, oh my God, there's so many. And like, this sounds interesting and this sounds interesting. The most important thing to do is just take the next step mm. and then take the next step and then take the next step. One thing I did want to mention too, because for any of you that work in like healthcare or like you feel like you work in an industry that's like really far removed from like the digital world, here's what I'll say. What we see people do and they find the most success is that you're going to take that industry knowledge and then you're going to bring it into the ability to serve a specific niche let me give you an example say you're a nurse right you're a nurse and you're like i am a nurse <laughs> how am i supposed to bring that online so what you can do is out of all of these kind of digital examples that we mentioned you can learn a new skill that sounds fun for you but then your unique edge is taking your nursing background and applying that to an industry. So maybe actually you wanna help private practices online. Maybe you wanna help like just small, like small independent companies that are health focused, but they like run a private practice, they're small. You can then take your nursing background and use that as the competitive edge for anything that you do. So I'll give you an example. Say out of all this, you're also that person that takes all the pictures. Do you know what I mean? Like you take all the pictures at the event. Okay, great. What then that means is that maybe you actually can do social media management, but then you would lean into your nursing kind of competitive edge. So then you could be a social media manager for like small, like dietitian companies or nutritionist companies, et cetera. The cool thing about that that is then to so say you apply for this job or like somebody's looking to hire you and another person. If you are social media manager but you also have five years of nursing experience in the health and wellness field and then somebody else applies and they do social media management but they actually don't have any background doing that you will win the job because you you have industry knowledge and in health and wellness so even though you might actually be up against somebody who has more social media experience than you do they have no experience in the health and wellness field so then fundamentally, the person hiring would pick you over pretty much anybody else because your background completely relates to the service that you're going to offer. Yeah. So what's cool about this is that even if you don't say maybe like love what you do in corporate for whatever reason or your job, there's elements that you can keep. So in that element, you're, you're not still going to be a nurse, but you're going to keep elements of that. So yep. you might not like that actual job or the day-to-day -day doing of what you like, but you might like the industry. Mm -hmm. Vice versa, you might not like the industry that you currently work in, but you might like some of the elements of your job. So the cool thing about working online is you can take the elements that you like and leave the elements that you don't. Yep. Yes. So this is just a handful, y'all, of the examples that we see. There are literally more than probably a hundred types of digital services. And the cool thing is that actually you can also create a service that makes sense for you and that makes sense for a person that wants to buy it, right? So in summary, again, if you have not joined us yet for the five steps class, you have to come. It's 60 minutes, one hour. Yeah, so totally full side, free. one hour, totally full free. side, one hour in the week and commit to come. It's no cost at all. But what we actually do is, so this is more of like what exists, but that class, we actually walk through, okay, but what are the actual steps to start making money, right? And to actually start working online. Our goal is to liven you up, spice you up, show you what's possible, talk through the options, answer your questions, and support you as you are figuring all of this fun stuff. Cool? All right, babies. Until next time, see you next week. Bye.